Welcome back to the fold with Streets of Rage 4. It has been a long ass time coming for this game. The original Streets of Rage came out back in 1991. Just think about it, it's been almost 30 years since that game came out to this game finally coming out now. And the thing is, it's not like they took several years in between or whatever. Streets of Rage 3 came out in 1994, so we've been waiting 26 years for this game to finally make it to our hands. And when I say it's well worth the wait, it really is well worth the wait. And it really highlights the fact that a lot of gamers out there are too quick to judge a game before it's released as we see like for example with the last of us 2 we've got a lot of people saying all kinds of stuff about that i'm not going to get into that here but it's a good example of judging a book by its cover and not reading the book itself because a lot of people really got upset about this game at first when they first saw the very first screenshots with the graphics as they are and assume that it would be some cheap cash in game and it's anything but I mean Streets of Rage 4 first of all I think visually looks nice especially in motion I mean yeah the screenshots I guess I could see a slight argument but it's not like it was some no-name scrub developer that nobody ever heard of making this game this was the same people that brought us games like Wonder Boy and the Dragon's Trap you know, Lizard Cube, of course. And that was a fantastic game. Fantastic visuals. A fantastic remake of a classic Master System game. So it only made sense for a studio like that that understood how these kinds of things worked with bringing back old games to be involved with it. Not to mention, of course, the fact that a lot of people complain about the music whenever they first show that off. Now, you're hearing some of the classic Streets of Rage music, of course. You do have the option to go back to the classic soundtrack if you really want to. If you really hate the new music. But I think the new music is great. And is it as good as the classic? Well, that's up to the eye of the beholder, honestly. But we have to keep a few things in mind. First of all, a lot of that is nostalgia talk because... A lot of us grew up as kids with that classic Sega Genesis hardware with its fantastic sound chip that had some trouble being used properly, but when it was used properly, it really gave a real treat to the ears. And we have to realize that a lot of people's nostalgia is what really was causing the problem with that, with their problems with the music, because these sound developers like Yuzo Koshiro, who did the soundtrack for the Streets of Rage games back in the day, he had to work with what was available and he had to do everything that he could with it. And that's why the game has that particular sound is because he utilized the Genesis sound chip in a very unique way that most games did not. But it also had a unique sound itself, that whole sound chip, and so you have to keep that in mind. Nowadays, music developers, they practically have no limits. Given that the new systems nowadays have literally hundreds of sound channels that they can use at once, so they really, literally can do anything like that. They can use any kind of samples they want. They have a lot of creative freedom that they didn't really have in the 16-bit days. And so... That being said, is it a knockout soundtrack that's absolutely better than the old games? No, but I think it's a soundtrack that is still very well done, that still holds in high regard to the original soundtrack, and definitely has that vibe of the original soundtrack. Now, I finally, of course, destroyed this car. I didn't realize I can get an achievement for it, uh, but it's a classic, of course nod to Street Fighter 2 when you were able to destroy the cars during the bonus stages. But, or, was it... I know Street Fighter had it. Maybe it was more of a reference to Final Fight. I'm not really sure. But, now the gameplay, of course, beat-em-up games are very simple. 
very simplistic games to play, but there is a lot that can still be done to really enhance the experience, and Streets of Rage 4 does that in spades. I mean, I'm playing with the legacy controls so that I can get as close to the original Sega Genesis style controllers, controllers, controls that you can. And by the way, if you're using like a USB or Bluetooth game controller that is model after a Sega Genesis, be excellent to play this game with. But I digress. Um, I like playing with the legacy controls because it really throws me back. That's what I'm used to. And I don't want to have to hit certain buttons. Now, there are some downsides to using legacy controls, for example. If you want to pick up items with the normal controls, you can have that map to its own button by itself. So you don't accidentally pick up the chicken or whatever while you're in the middle of a fight. So that's something you have to keep in mind if you want to do the new controls. There are some advantages to it, obviously. But I wanted that classic feel, and that's why I went with that. And I really like what they did with it, because even though it still is just a simple three-button game like it was back in the day, they've added a lot of new mechanics and things that you can utilize to really kind of take that to the limits, really. I mean, for example, you can actually do combos and juggles on the enemies now. You can actually, like, do air juggles and all kinds of crazy stuff like that, which is awesome. And uh, really helps, of course, with your score as well. You obviously want to get better score if you want to get extra lives and things like that, of course. And they, of course, added a new special system that you can use where um, I know with the you know, one of the buttons, obviously, is your special attack. And whenever you use it, it's like a better attack than normal, obviously. It takes a little bit of your health away, but you get that health back as long as you don't get hit by the enemy. Uh, by, you know, hitting them back in succession, you know, so it is, has a good risk-reward system going on with that. Obviously, it's not the best technique to use in certain situations, but if you know what you're doing, you can really get far without having to panic about the lack of health or enemies surrounding you or things like that, you know, which are all things you do have to worry about in these kinds of games. And everything is just so masterfully crafted because it is a new game, obviously, but there is so much nostalgic love to this game. By the way, I used what was called a star power right there. That's actually where those little star icons, you pick those up throughout the stage, and they're like the best attacks that you can obviously use. They're, you know, full screen interrupting attacks and whatnot. It's pretty awesome. Of course, it didn't save me, obviously. I still took lost my life there. I was kind of hoping that I was going to be able to take these guys out before I lost my life, because... And the old classic beat em up adage, it always seems like as soon as you transition to the next screen, there's a health power up right after you died. This game does not disappoint in that regard. <laughs> so that's still here, but that's kind of expected, you know, like it gives you a way to kind of like learn to get better at the game, kind of learn in the maps, learning the enemies, learning all the patterns and things like that. So that next time you'll have a little bit more health and we'll be able to pick up those health power-ups instead of losing your lives. So, it's definitely good to see that, of course, in this game. One thing that's really awesome, though, which... I think most beat-em-up games should have this, especially given that we're in the middle of a global pandemic right now, and a lot of people can't really gather together if they don't like live together or something like that to play video games, because of, obviously, the risks that could be involved, especially with a virus that... Uh, can take up to 14 days before you even show any symptoms, so it's kind of a risky maneuver. Uh, but it has two-player online play. That means you can play with somebody else that also has the game, which is awesome. Very awesome indeed that you can kind of continue the adventure with a friend online. It does support four-player local co-op as well. Very sweet. You can get this game on any platform pretty much right now. Nintendo Switch, PC, Xbox One, uh, PS4. I am playing this through PC Game Pass, which I've heard of some people saying that they couldn't even get this game to run on PC Game Pass. I don't know. I guess your mileage may vary with that. But uh, I was able to get it run just fine. Now, I noticed something really interesting whenever I watched some of the Digital Foundry videos. Apparently, some of the versions have different features and... The Xbox and PC versions are missing features. Uh, the PC Game Pass specifically. Missing features that the other versions don't miss. And I also find it really curious that... 
Um, every version of the game pretty much is ported by a different studio, even though Lizard Cube's a developer. I found that kind of interesting. I don't know if that meant that, like, Lizard Cube kind of, like, developed the game itself, but then these other companies were involved with making sure the games run properly on whatever respective platforms. I really don't know. I don't really get what that's about, but uh, there were a lot of people involved in this game. Of course, you know, it, it's really interesting, even though it's a Sega game, it's technically published by .mu which they do a lot of uh, retro re-releases and things like that for all kinds of different games. So, yeah. That's kind of a weird uh, factoid. I don't really get that, but... Whatever. <laughs> I don't know, maybe Sega wasn't really sure that this game would be a success. But after seeing how good it is, I think it's pretty evident that Sega kind of, like, undercut themselves on this one. Uh, so, you have multiple difficulty levels, of course, that you could play through the game. I think I was actually playing on hard here. Yeah, hard. Yeah, of course. Uh, you could play on multiple difficulty settings to really tailor the game to your liking. If you lose during a stage, you have the ability to restart the stage with assist options, which will give you like extra lives or star powers. To kind of make the stage a little bit easier to beat but on the flip side of course you get a lot less points and you want those points in order to get unlockables and things like that so i decided because i unlocked streets of rage one axle after getting enough points finally let's check out what that is all about because you can play as five characters of course you have axel you have blaze you have adam just like in the original streets of rage and then you have new characters uh, Cherry and Floyd, I want to say, are the new characters that you can play as. And you can also play as basically everybody that's ever been in a Streets of Rage game, including multiple variations of it. Like, I'm playing here, Axel from Streets of Rage 1. He even looks like the classic characters. Matter of fact, it's kind of really weird because he doesn't even look like he belongs there at all. <laughs> you know, he looks like he's just a caricature of that world. But it plays like the classic Axel from Streets of Rage 1. It has his controls, his moves, his movement styles. And as you might notice in the original Streets of Rage, you don't have the special moves like you do in this game. Instead, you have this cop car that comes out and shoots a big bazooka at the enemies and causes a bunch of destruction. You get that. It is awesome. It is very awesome, guys. So much nostalgic love for this game. You, you can unlock all these characters. There's all kinds of classic nods to the classic games, of course. And for some weird reason, of course, we have police officers and thugs fighting each other. But they're also fighting me. Like, I'm on nobody's team at all here. They all want to take me out. What a crazy time indeed. But fortunately, they can kind of defeat themselves a little bit. And that helps out quite a bit. Let's watch this cop body slam that guy for good measure. Thank you very much, officer. <laughs> but uh, there's just so much that I love about this game. This is easily one of the best beat-em-up games I've played in my entire life. This game was well worth the wait. 26 years, and it's every bit as enjoyable as I would have hoped it would be. This series has came a long way, and... I'm glad that we're getting good beat-em-ups again because those are some of my favorite games from my childhood. You know, obviously it's a lot of fun to play with friends, and back in those days there weren't a whole lot of games that you could, you know, play with friends in a cooperative fashion besides beat-em-ups, and then you occasionally got run-and-gun games like Contra. Um, but for the most part, the beat-em-ups seem to be like the most common genre that you would be able to do this two-player co-op kind of stuff on and it was just a blast playing them you know playing of course the classic arcade games i can't pick up this money for some reason because carrying that weapon for some reason wouldn't allow me to do it bonkers indeed um and then we had these crazy games like x-men six-player arcade cabinets with these huge ultra widescreen monitors good freaking times of course four player ninja turtles arcade games and all kinds of good stuff you know i mean beat em ups are just so much fun they are kind of shallow they're short um but they're so replayable and just fun 
pick up and play action. You know, you don't have to memorize crazy moves like you do in a fighting game. Memorize very intricate combat controls. You know, you just have to kind of memorize enemy patterns and stage layouts and things like that. It's very simplistic and very easy for newcomers to get into and then of course people to kind of master as well as they play through them you know some of my favorite games from this time of course are beat-em-ups that i played back in the day you know i really enjoyed games like ninja turtles arcade and golden axe streets of rage of course i enjoyed all of those including of course streets of rage 3 which is considered the black sheep of the series I don't really get it though because honestly before this game at least it was the best playing of the games but Streets of Rage 2 was more of a complete package overall in terms of the graphics and the music and just the whole theme of the game it definitely felt a lot better to play in that regard but Streets of Rage 3 was a little bit faster paced and I think they did some good improvements in terms of the gameplay so it's kind of tough to say. I even still love the original Streets of Rage. I mean, I I can see that it's not as good as the other two, but that's kind of the one that I play. You know, I had the Genesis 6 pack. It was one of the games included on it, and I enjoyed the hell out of it. Other than probably Golden X, that was probably my most played game on that 6 pack, you know. And the reason why is because Golden X is one of my favorite beat-em-ups. And, you know, Streets of Rage is too. Streets of Rage 4 definitely is. This game is phenomenal in every way. You should do anything you can to play this game. If you can buy it on a platform of choice, they have physical copies out there. I know Limited Run did a thing. Of course, I had to pre-order the Switch copy, even though I'm playing on some Game Pass, because I just had to have a physical copy of this. And then when I finally get it, I'm going to use the Bare Knuckles 4 reversible cover, because it looks a lot better than the uh, Streets of Rage 4 cover that they decided to use. And then, of course, we have physical copies, uh, I think, from Merge Games or someone like that coming through Amazon. There's going to be a lot of different ways that you can get this game physically if you want. Digitally, of course, 25 bucks, Very fair price for what you get here. I mean, beat em up games are a little bit on the shorter side, but you have a lot of replayability with this game. You know, being able to unlock all kinds of new characters and things like that. Multiple difficulty settings. Four player local co-op, two player online co-op. There is a lot to love here and if you haven't really dug beat em up games, Streets of Rage 4 is a no brainer guys. I really enjoyed this game through and through and I hope it really comes through in this video of what I'm playing. So I'm going to continue playing some Streets of Rage 4 but next time on what I'm playing we're going to go into the past we're gonna do a little time traveling a little spinning if you will so stay tuned down phoenix out